All right, so uh, thank you very much to the AIHES for giving me the mic for half an hour to uh, try to educate everybody about uh, institutional bias. Um, yes, so first uh, I was wondering who's coming to this talk? Who are you, are there more men or more women? So with a round of applause, the men, the men, who are you? Yeah. And the women with a round of applause, where are the women? Oh, wow. You guys don't really care so much about institutional bias, huh? <laughs> I, I guess I wouldn't either if I was a man. Um, all right, uh, so are you all academics? Where are the non-academics? Oh, wow, you're very brave for coming here. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, so in a math talk, usually when I give a math talk, the, the, the audience assumes that what I'm explaining on the board is correct and, uh, and that I'm leading the people towards understanding a theorem. And uh, usually I also encourage people to ask questions whenever they have some. Uh, here it's not exactly a math talk. And uh, so I'm going to ask to uh, thank you, uh, keep your question for the end. You can jot it on a piece of paper and then ask it at the end. It's very likely, or maybe it could happen, not very likely, that I'm going to make a mistake. If you spot a mistake, just write it down, ask the question at the end. And yeah, anyone can make mistakes. I guess uh, among the mathematicians, have any of you already made mistakes? <laughs> yes, yes, we make mistakes. And then, uh, and then once we make a mistake, we, uh, we correct it because, uh, because this, is, uh, this is math. You can't hide the mistakes. I'm getting thirsty. But <laughs> you can't hide the mistakes. And this is what's so great about, the, about our job, right? Because you can rely on things that you think are true for sure. Anyway, so I'm, tra I'm trying to treat the subject uh, as a mathematician. Um, so institutional bias, I looked up the definition. Uh, I, I chose Oxford reference. Some colleagues of mine, sometimes they look up math stuff in Wikipedia. It's frowned upon by the French people. <laughs> yeah, they, so, so I went Oxford reference, it looks, looks you know, something you can trust, right? So they, they say a tendency for the procedure and practice of a particular institutions to operate in ways which result in uh, certain social groups being advantaged or favored and other being disadvantaged or devalued. This need not meet to be the result of any conscious prejudice or discrimination, but rather of the majority simply following existing rules or norms. Uh, institutional racism and institutional sexism are the most common examples. Okay, so you know, if I want to put like some more concrete example, uh, requiring, to, requiring to have balls in literal sets, that's going to be sexist discrimination. Requiring some height is going to be re requiring some, having some height requirement for a given job. That's going. That's not necessarily sexist, but that will lead to a big chunk of one of the gender being disadvantaged. Uh, right, and so so that's the definition for today. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to make an assumption. That's today's assumption, and, uh, and you know, some people, you know, historically, historically, we have thought that uh, it wasn't the case. We have thought that the distribution were not the same. Uh, some people, you know, it used to be that we thought that women were just stupider than men, <laughs> right? And then that's, that's changed a little bit over time. Now, um, some people think that we have the same, we are stupider and more or less in same average, but we don't have like the same dis distribution of, uh, of stupidity or intelligent, right? So, and, but, but today, today I'm just, I'm really going to assume that, uh, that actually I have, one and only curve. It's, it's relatively well supported by facts. You know, if, if people have been looking at Parcoursup now, or yeah, it's, it's, it's relatively well documented. But you know, if you really object to that, you can come and talk to me at the end. We can discuss <laughs> it. <laughs> so, um, 
Right, so this slide uh, shows, um, it, it comes from the Journée Parité. So Journée Parité is one day we organize uh, with some people to discuss uh, gender imbalance in math in France. And so uh, Laurence Brose came and uh, gave a talk where she uh, studied, she's a, she's a statistician and also the, the president of, uh, of Femmes Mathématiques or some, anyway. And uh, so here she, uh, she showed us this, uh, this graphic. Do you, do you see, see what I mean? So Professor 20, I'm section 25. In France uh, has a different section for different, pure math is 25. It's going to be my lens today. There's fantastic math, pure math, that's done outside of the section 25. But today my lens is going to be on section 25. Uh, and so this is the professors, like me, and, uh, but it's not the whole population of, uh, of, um, of uh, Mathematician 25. There's also uh, Maître de Conférence and uh, maybe, uh, right. The Maître de Conférence, they are uh, more or less, no, so they're uh, here. Uh, the graphic, oh, my hand is not very steady. The graph is more or less like this, right? And you can do the math to see where the green uh, line is going, right? So, so the, this, is, this is like, this is the, the junior people and this is the, the, the senior people in the French system. I mean, th th this is like the first position and then the second position. So, um, Yes, and uh, so, so, so of, of course we're kind of puzzled by this graph. It, it kind of looks like an equilibrium. It hasn't changed in what, 20 years. And things happen in, tw in 20 years. I mean, I mean no, 20, 20 years? 30 years? No, 20 years, I guess, yeah, 20 years. Okay, um, yeah, and, and I have to, so of course we're wondering why, why is that? And uh, we're trying to, so, so the, people, the people who think, some people say like, I tell, can tell you where, because because this is where, this is where the PR25 are. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> it's a way of saying you're not there because you're stupider, but not, uh, it's a polite way of trying, but, but you know, we're still, anyway. So that's, that, 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 that's one explanation, but since today we have this assumption, we, uh, we'll leave that explanation. So yeah, and it's also not at all uh, due to bad male behavior. In fact, I think that uh, mathematicians are uh, better behaved than many people in other fields. Uh, in, in, my, in 2018, I wrote a piece on the glass ceiling, this phenomena, and I started my piece by, uh, by uh, relating some incident about a very famous, older, eminent colleague of ours who was uh, giving a talk a uh, very fancy talk and then a grad student at the end comes in and she would like a selfie and so the guy accepts for the selfie and tells the student I will think of you in the shower tonight <laughs> 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 and uh, so so and, and my journalist friend read my piece and she told me come on Indira in my field the older eminent colleague would have groped her and everybody would have laughed <laughs> And yes, so, so yes, if you've seen uh, last year's uh, movie, Picture a Scientist, uh, you should definitely see that, watch this movie, and you can see that in fields where there are uh, very pyramidal structure and big labs and money stuff, it's much worse for the women. It's much worse. And... Uh, I can see some like confused looks. Is she telling us that we can grope the student? No, this is not what I'm saying. <laughs> this is not what I'm saying. Um, yes, that, no, I was saying that uh, we, I think we are treated very, very well uh, for most of the time, except for maybe say a 1%. You know, whoever has been chair of a department is like, yeah, definitely 1% of our colleagues are crazy. Uh, yeah, we know that. Like I'd say 1%, maybe if you've been in, you maybe you want to say 2%. Yeah, we'll stick to 1% for my, for, my, uh, for my presentation. So this is the problem when you have a 1% creep in a population where you only have 6% women. We're basically walking targets. 
for the creep. It's not, you know, there's nowhere to go. And, uh, and, 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 and you know, if, especially if you're the younger one, he's going to find you. <laughs> right? And, uh, right, but, you know, uh, I know that a lot of people are like, yeah, we should do something against those people and trying to, but it's very difficult. There's nothing you can do. Something it's even done very legally, you know, just going around and insisting that this new women's theorem, in fact, are not so good. Right, so, so there's not much you can do. One thing that you could do it is just, you know, take it as a fact of life and in include it in your model. That's much easier than trying to find and, you know, to, to, to fight and to, to get some, like, ideal situation that you're not going to reach. You, can, you need to accept that there's a 1% difficulty. And, you know, and a very, very easy way to, uh, to fix that would <laughs> be to add a bunch of women. Then, then you know, we lose. The, we, you know, you kind of, uh, it, does, it doesn't become such a problem anymore. But, yeah, some, some kind of herd immunity, I guess. Okay. When did I start? 40? Yeah. Okay, you tell me if you're bored. Maybe I'll go quicker. Okay, uh, what did I want to say next? Okay, yes. So today I wanted to uh, discuss hiring in France because I show you the graph where we managed to uh, hire 6% uh, professor in 25 and the rest are male. So uh, I'm going to talk about hiring committee in France and maybe, in fact, I don't think I'll have time for that. We'll see. Maybe I get to the grant thing. So, uh, so, and I'm particularly qualified to discuss the hiring thing in France because I arrived in 2007. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, before that, no, I want. Yeah, before that, I want to say that initially, I, I, if you if you read my if you read my uh, my abstract. Am I not, you know, I changed my talk because last week I was at a very inspiring conference that was called Data Shape and that was uh, studying clouds of points. So now after being in this conference, everything's become a cloud of points. <laughs> and uh, and so, so I changed my talk. I, 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 initially I wanted to discuss, there's, there are good models of uh, this phenomenon I showed before, it's called the glass ceiling. And uh, last, last, last year, last 2016 at Journée Parité, uh, Igor Kochchamsi gave a really nice uh, account on this glass ceiling model and their simulations and anyway, it was, uh, it's, a, it's a nice piece of thing, I, but you know, uh, clouds of points uh, I think are so awesome that uh, I see everything like clouds of points. Anyway, um, so why, why I can discuss uh, hiring committees because uh, in 2007 I arrived in France and, uh, and uh, hiring committees, I was never invited to a hiring committee. I knew that they happened, and I knew that they were counting really heavily towards bonuses. But I was not invited until 2014, where they put quotas. Uh, so so I, got, uh, I got invited to be on those hiring committees. And uh, yeah, when, you call, you're, when you're being called on a job because of quotas, <laughs> it does feel a bit shitty. <laughs> right, and there's no denying that. Um, <laughs> But then, you know, you're also grateful that you get to learn how the system works. You get to learn how, how is that happening? And uh, so, so, um, so, of course, you know, I'm a good stud student, I'm a good girl. I'm just wondering, what am I supposed to do? Uh, so the task, the task is, uh, is pretty straightforward. You have 100 applicants, 100 candidates that I can see as cloud of points. It's actually bicolored cloud of points. I'm going to take another color that doesn't look either feminine or masculine. Anyway, you have a cloud of points and uh, you examine their files and then uh, you select 10 of them or maybe nine or some, some number of them that you want to audition. And uh, those when you, you audition and then you rank. One, two, three. Maybe you rank. Anyway, you basically rank, and basically, nowadays, the first one gets the job. It's not, but you know, you know you, right. So, um, but you know, according to what do you rank the people? I went around asking, how, according to what am I supposed to rank the people? 
I think that I'm supposed to optimize something, but I'm not sure what. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think you're, because you know, once you hire somebody, you feed them into a uh, university, like a, an ecosystem. And this person is going to prove stuff, maybe theorems, maybe ideas, students, uh, what else? You know, money, carbon. Many stuff is going to so so but and and uh, so right so so um, so I went around and asked people I'm in this committee I want to do a good job so that the France is not looking at me and saying oh my God because of the quotas we have this really bad person now in those committees right so I wanted yeah um, right so I went around asking and they they wanted uh, uh, scientific excellence is 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 a answer I got a lot. Uh, who has the best theorems? Who has the best theorems? You need to rank the who has the best potential? Who's going to be the best for this particular department? Uh, but so, you know, and, and as an external committee, usually you, you get asked scientific scientific excellence. So scientific, what is scientific excellence anyway? What, what does it mean to be a scientifically excellent? And most of the people are well, you'll know when you see it. This is terrible. I was there. I didn't see it. <laughs> you know, it's like the the king walking around naked. Anyway, I was there. I didn't see it. <laughs> this is yeah. I yeah. I didn't really see it. And this is this is where cognitive dissonance kind of kicks in, because uh, so so uh, to me so to me candidates are a cloud of points. in Rn. And uh, so you want to put an order. Rn is an abelian group. And if you have an order relation on your abelian group, it means that uh, for all a, b in Rn, either a is less than or equal to b, or b is less than or equal to a. So that's a total order relation on your group. And you, will, you also want that for any c in Rn, a plus c is less than or if if a is less than or equal to b, then a plus c is less than or equal to b plus c, right? Although, yeah, well, yeah, but that's, you know, they're not really candidates. So, so those numbers are really numbers which you represent the CV of a candidate, I guess. And this, this, is, this, is, this is where, you know, there's no best order. There's no like one order than necessary that's better than the other. What's going to constitute an order that's good? And, uh, and then when you have people that disagree on a candidate, when are you going to decide that those candidates are in fact equivalent? So uh, yeah, I guess you can topologize this space of order. You get a compact Hausdorff metric space and uh, you have an RN action. Uh, and you get an Rn invariant probability measure in it. So you could decide that uh, two candidates are equivalent if the measure of the order that decides them to be either greater or equal or you know, comparable. <laughs> Most of my colleagues in mathematician never even thought about the concept of order on Zn, which I thought, you know, that's, yeah. I, anyway, so scientific excellence. Um, scientific excellence. So, so in fact, you don't really know only the CV. You know, you know, uh, you know a little more. Um, you know a little more. In fact, uh, it's not it's not it's not a cloud of points. It's a moving cloud of points that depends on time, because and it doesn't it doesn't yeah right. It depends on time. But truth be told, it depends on position. Right? You have your candidate. It's moving on some graph. And, and as he moves on the graph, his, his, uh, his xi, xi1, xi2, etc., change, depending on where he is on the graph. Here, see, it's written, there is an animation. I'll show you an animation what I mean. Right. This is what I mean. Right. So this is your particles moving on the graph. You go somewhere, your stocks go up, you prove a theorem, your stocks go up. 
you um, you get a grant, your crop, your stocks go up. You need a creep. Your stocks go down. <laughs> you apply for a job that you don't get. Your stocks go down. Right? You spot a proof, spot a mistake in your proof. <laughs> well, that'll debatable. You know, your <laughs> stock might go up or down, depending on on uh, on uh, on what uh, you know on what you do with the with the with the proof. So anyway. Um, you're here, you walk on your graph, and uh, you know, your graph can, uh, can have something that's called deep pockets. Yeah, you have your base point here. I mean, I call it E because my graphs are all Cayley graphs or groups. But anyway, <laughs> you can have deep pockets. You know, you go your particle, you go around, and you get, you get stuck somewhere where it's very difficult to get out. Right? It's a graph that's, you know, there's one edge and then a big chunk here. It's very difficult to get out. If you have a few creeps, your stock keeps getting down. <laughs> you can't get out. But anyway, uh, that can happen. Or you can hit some like fantastic place that's going to make your theorem fantastic in your stock skyrocket. So anyway, how do we how do we uh, how do we uh, how do we analyze all this when we're in this hiring committee? And we're looking at this data. And uh, we're not allowed to like, input all this data into some computer algorithm because we've been told it's bad. That we cannot do. We have to like, rely on our, our expertise and knowledge of the field to decide what is scientific excellence. So <clears throat> really, you're faced with the problem that you have this data. You have this moving cloud of points. You have, the, you have what, you, what you know is the past trajectory starting from uh, the t is equal to zero is the time of PhD, and then this is the time of application, and you have another th one that's some other cloud of moving points here, and you want to compare them. But really, you're not really comparing them. What you're doing, if you're hiring somebody you're going to spend the rest of your life with, <laughs> you're not going to just look at the CV. You're doing some projection. Do I really want to spend the rest of my life with this person? Right, so, so, so you're doing some projection, uh, but based on what? Right, based on, based on things you know. So you're going to try and project what's going to happen here in the next 10 years, because that's going to be your new colleague. And you're going to project based on uh, maybe other trajectories that you've seen and that re resemble. So this is, you know, start resembling some person you really don't like. <laughs> <laughs> you can project it really low, but you know your neighbor doesn't have the same projection, so it's going to find another projection for this candidate. And uh, yeah, so my cloud of points, xi and yi, they're bicolored. And if one color is missing, you'll have no way to project, because you don't know. You have to, it resembles like nothing. You're, end up with a file, you don't no idea how to judge it. So you tend to not project it, forget about it. Move on to something you can project. I mean, it's human. You're choosing somebody you're going to live the rest of your life with. We're at least say, the next 10 years. And uh, so yeah, and uh, so to do this projection, we rely on what our colleagues say, letter of recommendations some very unevenly distributed markers, like, hi like hiring committees, <laughs> and uh, or, you know, editorial boards, and um, our own assessment, our own assessment of their CV that has been shown by some uh, randomized double-blind study, which is the golden standard for for, uh, for this kind of study, it has been shown by a randomized double-blind study that our own assessment favors men. Even if we're women, we're men, we favor men. We like men. <laughs> yeah, I like men. <laughs> so, uh, right. What am I saying now? Five. All right. <coughs> so I'm still here in... Um, my problem <coughs> of projection. By now, 
we have those, uh, those, uh, those, uh, those five candidates. I guess, I guess they're here, somewhere here. And we're trying to compute their projection. And, um, and, and there was also no way to check and see that what we've done is actually correct. Because if the people we don't hire, they don't have a job, they basically disappear from the system. There's no way of checking. It's like running a bad AI algorithm where you're trying to pick a dog from a wolf, but then you only feed the algorithm dogs that are sticking on their human laps. So you're never going to really learn what is a dog and what is a wolf. You're going to recognize the dogs because their humans are nearby. And and we don't we we can't check if what we're doing is sensible or not because that's it you know we we have no way of checking and um, yet we're still doing it with no way of checking that we do the right thing we're still doing it and we iterate the procedure that's that's the best thing about the French system we iterate the procedure twice and uh, and so and, and and we get the following numbers. So this is the so this is MCF is the first position that people the first it used to be that they would get this position as PhD plus zero or one. Now there's inflation, so they get their PhD at much later. And then and then once they get this PhD at much later stage. So this again I, I took it from Laurence Bro's uh, uh, slides. You should you should come back to the Journée Parité. Fifth of July in Jussieu is going to be a lot of fun. Laurence is going to present the continuum equilibrium that's probably, you know, she's going to present the, the COVID-19 uh, uh, disasters, wh whatever, the COVID-19 uh, numbers on those graphs. Anyway, so, th so this, is all, this is all from 2000, 2019, I think, 2019. Yes, so, uh, so right, so when I got to, when I, when, I, when I arrived in France, I was here to those 31. Without me, it would be 30. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I, you know, it was, yeah, it was pretty flattered to be in this select little pool of people. And uh, I, I didn't, I guess I didn't have much sympathy for, uh, I didn't really look at the numbers. But if you look at the numbers, you can see that 668 is roughly one and a half time this, right? One and a half. So if you if you, it kind of tells you that over time, roughly two thirds of the rank B men become rank A. And fifty five and thirty one. What's the ratio? Anyone can tell the ratio? Oof. <laughs> Time five or divide by five. So it's much less likely if you're a woman that you're going to become uh, rank A. So, so people offer all sorts of uh, explanation. Um, women are stupider, again. <laughs> no, they got other, also, uh, other explanation, like they like babies a little too much. Uh, they don't. You know, anyway, I've, yeah, so, so and, and when it's cloud of points, you can say, yeah, maybe you don't, we started with the same distribution, but then, but then, you know, it could be that when, when we, when we did this first, so here, here, but before here, you're, you're basically equal when you start the universe, the, the parcours soup is basically even, and then something happens, something happens that, that 19% uh, women only get here, so we do some selection, we could be selecting only the stupider women to get here. This is why they never become professor. <laughs> but I don't think this is what we're doing. It's very unlikely that this is what we're doing, right? But you know, there's no real proof. There's no telling what you're doing because since you know the, the distribution here at this stage can be anything, right? But if you move, yes. No, I said that you had a question. You had to, to wait for the end of the talk. Can you do that? Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> I, I can tell. I know it's difficult. <laughs> I know it's difficult. All right. Uh, I, I'll, I'm, I'm promise I'm going to get back to you and your question at the end of the talk. I'll even keep the slide to come back. All right. So uh, once you move away from the cloud of points, 
you see that those 155 points are actually people. They're women that I uh, managed to meet in those years, and I started working with them and, uh, and, and seeing how they're very competent. <laughs> yeah, I think there are a lot of them that I met. They're actually much more confident than me. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, so so and, uh, and 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 some of them waste so much time and energy in applying and getting rejected that you got to wonder um, if uh, you got to wonder. Is it really efficient as a system? I mean, I'm not saying. Men, that happened to men too. I know some very competent men that keep applying and never get their promotion. That's, yeah, I know a lot of them too. But we shouldn't treat that as a sum zero game. Women are, um, <coughs> are usually statistically a vulnerable population because of what I told you before, just out of the sheer minority, but not only. We have all sorts of statistical disadvantages. So the fact that we can see those women struggling and not succeeding in the way they should, we could just treat it as the canary in the coal mine. Remember the coal miners? When they're going down, they take a canary it's a little world that, that sinks and that's uh, very uh, vulnerable to gas emission and it's going to die before the rest of the coal miners uh, are even uh, sick because of the gas. So they have time to leave. And I think that these numbers could be, should be treated as a symptom of a problem in the way we in the way we uh, select and hire people. So this is Alex. And uh, Alex is a storm that uh, killed 10 people on the 30th of September in 2020 and uh, destroyed 400 buildings. And uh, it's basically due to global warming. And I think this really freaks me out. <laughs> <laughs> Global warming is absolutely scary. And, uh, but we spend um, this, uh, we spend 100 times more money for military than we do for clean energy and research and development. Basically, we're not treating it as a, as a priority. And uh, of course, you know, you could wonder. What you can do as a scientist? With scientists, you can, uh, I don't know what to do. I can uh, keep studying. The, I can keep talking about it and studying the models um, and going back to the model. When, what happens when you have encounters? Uh, suppose you have a popula population that's going to have some encounters and has two, two basic strategies. Either you cooperate. And so if two cooperative people uh, meet, they share one half of the dough, so they, you get one half. So if a cooperative person meets a jerk, the jerk gets everything. And the cooperative person gets zero, the jerk gets everything. Two jerks meet, they're going to fight, get some damage, and uh, get some damage. And, uh, and so you lose something. Basically, this, this is the loss. So you can wondering, you can wonder what's the best, uh, what's the best strategy? Is there, it, what's going to happen? You can see that if you only have cooperative people, and you put a jerk in it, it's going to have a huge advantage because everybody's giving him food, so he can reproduce and then take more importance. If you have only jerks, the cooperative guy is getting nothing, but at least he does not getting hurt, so he still have an advantage on the other. And you can compute the, you can compute the equilibrium which I'm not going to do right now, but it's, it's, it's a L1 exercise. And you can also see that if you put more penalty on, uh, on fighting, then you will have a population that is more cooperative. But the question is, what, what happens for the full system? 
The full system is much better off if everybody cooperates. As a unit, you're much better off is if everybody cooperates. So, um, so right. Um, well, that's yes, uh, right. And uh, my point is that the A and B division that we have in France is not fostering cooperation at all. It's typically uh, something that will not foster cooperation. So if we want to do something uh, for our planet burning and uh, going to hell, basically because of a system that has been favoring men so, so, so badly, what we should do is, uh, is we, should, uh, we should spend all our energy into uh, thinking about this problem of, uh, of clean energy and what we can do. But we should go at it with a, with a good strategy, with a 50% women's strategy, not with a lame-ass 6% strategy where you basically miss out on half of your brains and you don't even include them in, uh, in those important research. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. And I'm back to your question. Uh, I, you want the na numbers? Yes, again, yes. I, I was wondering uh, if this bias uh, also exists in the other disciplines. I mean, the very precise ones that you mentioned here. Uh, passing the, from the... the um, Passing from the associate professor rank to yeah. the professor rank. So I, so you can, yeah, you can, yeah. It's it's more or less everywhere. It's more or less everywhere. Yeah. I mean, yeah. In, in chemistry, for instance, where yeah, yeah, it's everywhere. It's okay. yeah. I, I I didn't look the exact numbers, but it's basically everywhere. And what's very interesting is that if you look at very feminized uh, the, um, fields, if you look closer, it's even thicker than in math. Because you know, you can you can look at the thickness of your ceiling just by comparing the ratio of the 19% and the 6%. But you know, if you have if you had instead of 19%, if we had say 99%. Mm -hmm. And then as professor, we had some you know, 80%, even 60%. You could tell that there would be the glass ceiling is pretty thick too. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for making you wait no. until the end of the talk. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you for your talk. And I guess now it's question time. <laughs> so if anyone else has another question, or I know there's online questions as well. Um, so does anyone have a question in the room? Do you have a question? Yeah, I, have a question. Um, I, I would be interested if you know how many women out of 155 um, pass an habilitation or dirige des recherches or truly candidates? I mean, because it, it could be also another bias in the sense that they are not uh, uh, feeling that they want to do this uh, or... Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, I, don't have the, I don't have the exact numbers. They're really, they're difficult to find. Uh, yeah, I, t at some point I thought I wanted the exact numbers and then I decided I was not so interested anymore in the exact numbers because okay. once I, you know, you start knowing the people and you're like, oh my God, you would be so good as a professor. I don't know why you're not. And, uh, and so then, then, you know, then it kind of goes over the numbers somehow. Yeah, but you know, it's a good question too. Like, I mean, Laurence Bros probably, uh, we, we had this question and then, you know, then you're like, Maybe they don't get the ability. They don't do the habilitation because they don't want to bother. Because they know that it's not going to help. It's not going to. It's going to do anything for you. And you know, I don't think we treat the Rambé very well. And uh, and so so by not treating them very well, uh, especially when they you know become older, uh, it's really not like fostering collaborations as it should. Like for instance, in my case, I got here and I was like kind of lonely. When I was in the US, I had so many girlfriends. It was awesome. And then I get here and I think, yeah, yeah, there's some women, 
but they're not anywhere near me. And then a lot of them are home based, so I can't go around and whine about my job <laughs> to them, right? So there's no, yeah, I can't whine about my job to anybody. That was, yeah, that was kind of lonely. But <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. Did I answer your question? Yeah, but yeah. For example, you can ask if, uh, as a community, uh, when you have uh, a women met the conference, we are not asking her to take a lot of administrative duties. Yeah, well, I'm and sure, we yeah. Say, uh, okay, administrative duties are not important. Yes. Personal. Yeah, yes, but, but this is... Not just hiring committees, I want. No, no, it's definitely not just hiring committees. What happened with hiring committees is pretty interesting because before the quotas, it was, uh, it was counting a lot towards bonuses if you were in hiring committee, you know, and you do those prim. I was in there so I could see. Like if you have your hiring committee, your stocks go up a lot. And now because of the quotas, hiring committee don't pay anything for your stocks anymore. <laughs> so it's basically volunteer work for us French women. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's very interesting volunteer work. Nothing wrong with volunteer work. I think volunteer work is, is, is yeah. But, but it, yeah, it's, we, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's, an, it's something, it's, it's a commonly studied thing that when women start to accede to something, it devalues the thing we start getting. It's a lose-lose situation, that's okay, but that's okay, it doesn't, you know, the job is still great, I'm still very happy to, to do mathematics, it's, it's a great job. Uh, yeah, so I, yeah, I don't know. I, so yeah, I don't have like a silver bullet or anything, but you know, we could, there, there's, be, there's many things we could do. For instance, one thing that we could do, and I think, and that would be free, what we could do is take all those women, the 155 women, and put them here. <laughs> I don't think that would be horrifying. <laughs> you know, I think it would, I think that'd be a fine job. They're, they'd be doing a great job, I think. And it wouldn't cost us anything because of the way things go. You just don't adjust the passage rouen and you wouldn't be basically free. But if you do that, oh my God, the men in the rank B, just, no, we can do that. The men, no, yeah, that would be, a, yeah, no, I don't know. Uh, but it's an interesting, I think we should try this idea. It's free, it's cheap, it doesn't, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. And it's the same as the CNRS or not? Uh, yeah, I looked at the CNRS. Uh, I don't remember the CNRS. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember the CNRS. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, the numbers are low. Yeah, 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 the numbers are lower. So, the th this is the thing. It's like it takes so much time to look up these numbers, and uh, and again, it's basically volunteer work for me. <laughs> so. So, so yeah, it, it takes a lo lot of time. L Laurence Brose does it really well uh, once every four years. So I think I am very grateful to Laurence for doing this work. And I hope that you will come on Journée Parité, 5th of July, Jussieu, uh, to, yes. Yes. Uh, have you made uh, <coughs> any comparisons uh, with uh, what happens in all the countries? Uh, no, I haven't made any, no, because I, I'm actually totally not a statistician. I'm a geometric group theorist, so, <laughs> so, uh, so I, I, I kind of do this thing when I suddenly, I think, you know, this, this, this obvious thing and nobody sees it. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, uh, I've, I've only compared with my own experience. So I was a professor in the U.S. and, uh, yeah, um, the system is a bit different. I think that basically it's the same kind of idea. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, yes. Yes. Um, thanks. You, thank you for the talk. Uh, I just had a question. A lot of the reasons why there aren't as many women in, in STEM fields um, in research are pretty inherent to society. I mean, there's not there's no one that comes up to you and says that you're not smart enough because many of us are. It's just the way we're raised and the way we see things as a society. Um, what do you think we can do to, I mean, get change in this field? Because I do not see... Well, you know, yeah, I mean, there's a, here's an idea. You could put a lot of money to hire women mathematicians. 
And once women mathematicians see that there is a lot of money, a lot of jobs to be made there, they'll come. But as, as long as they see that if they get a job, they'll never go up to the ladder all the way to the top. They're never going to come. I mean, most of us, we study mathematics because we're kind of smarter than everybody else around us, right? <laughs> That's a little bit what happens, right? So, so we don't get into mathematics thinking, yeah, that's great. I'm going to be like, remain this average, not very well paid mathematician. Most of us, when we're young, we're just, we're so, we're smart. We want to go to the top. We want to conquer the world. Why would you go to a job where you know you're not going to, to, uh, to go all the way? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that if you hired massively a bunch of women to do math, well, you will find a big amount of women to do math. So would that be fair? Um, and also... Would that be fair for the men? In the sense where um, I believe that my male colleagues are just as deserving. It's just that I also think that my female colleagues are just <laughs> as deserving. I don't know if I... Well, so, you know, Fairness is very relative. I mean, we, life is, you know, world is not fair and we, we uh, benefit a lot from the world not being fair. You know, we are here, we eat as much as we want, we can walk around without getting shot or mugged. So, yeah, um, I don't know, this shows that <laughs> we've been pretty unfair to women and we, you know, the world goes on and the world is unfair to some people and it's not a big disaster. Yeah, it would be maybe unfair to some men, but maybe they'll benefit. You know, maybe what happens if you put those 155 women in charge of being professor? What will happen? You know, maybe they'll just uh, do something to be fair to the men. <laughs> you know, is it very hard to imagine that if we were in charge, we would be fair to the men too? Why is it so hard to imagine? Yeah, I think my question was mostly, it's like when you joined the, um, the hiring committee. Yeah. The hiring committee lost, a, you said that the hiring committee lost a bit of its value. Yes. In the eyes of other men. Yes, but maybe it was good that hiring committee loses value. Yeah. We, it was good because it was not, oh, and by the way, <laughs> what would happen when you put women in charge? Well, absolutely nothing. Nothing happened. <laughs> I, can, I, can, <laughs> I can go and see here, right? So this is when we were in charge. Oh. Yeah. No, what did I say? 2014? That's what I said. Yeah. Big achievement girls. <laughs> So I have a comment from uh, Alicia Dickenstein online. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's saying about your table, uh, the table you s you we discussed. Uh, it would be interesting to disaggregate uh, information according to age and generation, because this would also mean that more young women are hired lately. So she's not saying that this is the case, but it would be interesting to know the year of hiring and the age of the candidate at the time. Yes, yes, yes. I, I thought, yeah, I need, indeed think I, it would be very interesting to, uh, to do more work on that. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. All of those tables are, are online in the scene. Yes, yeah. yes. Check by age and generation. They have all the numbers. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah, it's not very difficult to find. Yeah, I, yeah. I have to say that uh, each time I do some job like this, write an opinion piece, and I have to do this research. Oh, it's really unpleasant. I mean, doing calligraphs and walks and kale is so much more fun. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. So, um, so somehow I would like to ask what is specific to math and for example in medicine uh, maybe 30 years ago you had essentially no women and now 
it's more balanced. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, I don't know what it means for Matt if we should be desperate because we are unable to do anything, or if it's an optimistic uh, point of view saying that things can change in our discipline. So why we cannot do it? So I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I, I don't know. It's, a, it's yeah. It, I think it's an interesting question. Why is it that some fields manage to uh, to uh, to get almost to equality, and they treat their women really badly? The doctors, I think they're so bad. <laughs> we've, seen, we've we've heard all sorts of horror stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I yeah, yeah. I don't know how they manage that. And for us, the curve is desperately flat. Yes. Dead. <laughs> But in medicine, you have 70% of students and women in medical profession. But in university, you have only 10% of women professor in medicine. So the glass ceiling is still here and very... Okay, it's um, good. Mm. Yeah, and and so and those 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 uh, those curve those uh, flat curves by Laurence Brose don't say anything because there have been a fluctuation of total population of mathematicians. We are shrinking. The section 25, the pure math is shrinking. That's what I'm saying. We're the canary in the coal mine. Listen to that. <laughs> We're shrinking. Pure math is shrinking, and it's 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 kind of terrifying because it's it's shrinking as we refuse to see that. Our Earth is warming. We don't want to do the the intellectual work of I don't know trying to understand, trying to save ourselves from burning. I guess, yeah. Thank you. Um, well, just as an introduction, I'm a physicist. And, and I work uh, in biology also. And there are lots of statistics. I mean, the CNRS has done statistics. There was a program called Integer. And uh, there are many statistics in all different fields. And the more, it's really striking that uh, this ratio A to B, the more women there are in biology is very striking. There are more women and the ratio is worse. So the question is not the number. In fact, math has a very low number. <laughs> But the ratio is better, maybe, <laughs> even though it's not very good. And in physics, it's sort of in between. But the problem is, no, here the question is, why not more women start to, do, to go into the field? And there's a lot of work. I'm into uh, a lot of groups like uh, women in science, women in physics, and women in optics, because I work in optics. And uh, the question is, those people, and it's a lot of women scientists, go into the schools. I go, I spend weekends in schools to talk to both boys and girls to tell them that they should do science. And there are a lot of women who do that. And that's, well, that's to try to increase the number of, of both boys and girls, you know, to address these problems. We need more people to do science. And you have to go and do this work. And frankly, there are more women who do this work. Talk to the young people, go into schools, even great schools, any kind of school, high schools. And you know, there are lots of groups of women who do that. And please, you know, if, if everybody who was into science, math, physics, or other fields would do that, spend, you know, go on Saturday mornings, go for an hour of driving to, to schools that don't have, not a, like around here where you have already scientists around you, but go to other, other parts of France or of around Paris where there are not so many scientists around them. Go and talk to them. And, and then you'll have more people doing science and more girls because when they're younger, they're not as biased. They don't know yet that it's going to be hard. They don't care yet. I mean, this is something that you care about after a certain age. But when you're young, you just want to do this because it's fun, because people tell you that it is fun. And so I think we should work on this because if there are more people, there will also be more girls if you start you know, and go do this work. So that's just a comment. I'm sorry, right, it's not a thanks, question. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a very good comment. I think I think there are initiatives to uh, go and bring the math to the to the to the schoolgirls is are usually very successful. Uh, but it's kind of uh, yeah. The, I'm, I I did it once. I I probably won't do it. I mean, I'm stretched thin to what I can do as, in terms of work. I mean, I'm barely surviving. My inbox is flooded by I don't know why many mails because I prepared this talk. 
I mean, I'm surviving. That's all I'm doing. So I cannot imagine adding something like this. It's like beyond my imagination. Plus, I would think it's a lie. I mean, how can I go and hey, come and study math? <laughs> you won't graduate <laughs> to rank A, but yeah, come. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, so, so uh, but there are some like fantastic women that are doing that. And in fact, as Journée Parité, where I invite you to come, we'll have the presentation of, uh, of uh, those, uh, those initiatives. Yes, and, and we hope that, uh, that uh, you know, people give money to this initiative so that women can actually uh, make a living out of doing that, or you know, get something, get get something out of it. If you pay something, that usually you're you, if you get money for something, your stocks go high, go up, and then yeah. Yeah, but I sorry, I wasn't saying only women should do that. My yeah. point was men should do it more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying you should do it. I'm saying you know, people in this room who are men in science should do it as well because there are too many women. I I agree. I have. It takes me a lot of my time, and I also have a lot of work. And frankly, I would like that this work is shared between both men and women. And I, you think, you think, yeah, I don't know. I was wondering, yeah, I, I was wondering, is it efficient if a guy goes into uh, sure. some room and say, "You girls, you should come and study math. We'll treat you well." <laughs> um, if I if I can add yes. to that, actually, like at my lab, we're organizing this. Uh, like two days for high schoolers to come um, and I mean they're all girls and they're coming except that in my lab there's many of us are there God knows. Uh, well they had to find two new girls every year to do it and every year it's a struggle to find two new girls uh, even though we're 500 people lab uh, two girl PhD students so I mean this year it is me but next year I don't know who I will find to do it um, and you know the thing is it it really feels like a woman problem and I think that can be disheartening because if it's a common problem if we agree to that then why should I be the only one planning I mean, sure, I should probably do the talking like to the students so that they see that there are figures that are relevant. Uh, but surely to order stuff, you can do it. And like to like plan stuff, you can help me. And we can all do it together. And then it, it makes like more of a team effort and it like gives the feeling that it is a, a common problem and not just a, go well, girls, we're gonna like have more women in the lab because we're women and we want more friends. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes it, uh, in, I think it would be good for more men to get involved in those things without like, necessarily like stealing the spotlight of like the presentations, but we like if if we consider this to be a real problem, then everybody should like pitch in, I think. Um, and I will take this opportunity <laughs> because we need to move on a little bit uh, to thank you again, you know, uh, for your talk.